so much for watching AM Northwest. With workplaces reopening, many employees find themselves anxious about returning to in-person work. Here to share four reasons why return to work anxiety and what you can do about it, we welcome back career strategist and professional brand expert, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh. Hi, Carol, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So let's talk about this because you've probably got clients who are a bit nervous about returning to work. So one of the things you talk about is managing your fear by focusing on what you want. Absolutely. Yeah, it is a very fearful situation. One of the things that's true is that our brain loves patterns and our because it helps us to make sense of the world. Yeah. So when things are thrown out of whack, it can create a lot of uncertainty, which can create a lot of anxiety. And so, but the, the problem is there's a lot of fear about what could happen if I go back into work and what will happen if I, I've created a routine and I've created a, a way that I live my life and I do my work and now it's all going to be thrown out of the window. And so what I tell my clients is to is to stop imagining what can happen. It really all centers in your thoughts. So you have to manage your thoughts around what you think could happen and start to focus on what you want to happen. So if you've been able to develop some type of routine or or a way of working that really makes sense for you, that makes sense in your life, there's, there's nothing to say that you can't bring that back into the workplace, right. whether you're going to work in a hybrid situation or, rem- or a full situation where you're going back to work. You don't have to go back to business as usual, right? right. That's not where we are right now. So this is a great opportunity to really, instead of focusing on what could happen, to really start making sense of what you want and how you want your work life to look like once you re-enter the workforce. Right. You also say to get clear on your specific fears. Exactly. Right. And so instead of imagining all the things that could happen, I mean, really narrow in on what is causing you the anxiety. Is it safety? Because you feel like going back, you don't feel quite safe that um, the virus has been contained, which it really hasn't been. So that's a very legitimate concern. Is it maybe you've traveled a lot with your job and you don't want to travel, you don't want to get on a plane or you don't want to be around a lot of people. Um, Or maybe it's the fact that you are afraid about visibility because um, you've lost a lot of visibility. Maybe you feel like because you've worked remotely and you're concerned that if you continue to work remotely that you won't feel, you won't have the same visibility or how do you get visible when you come back into work? So there could be a lot of individual concerns that you're having. So really work to narrow in on which of the fears is really holding you hostage. And then what you want to do is have open communication. Review HR policies, review safety policies, look at what the current, the EEOC and the law has been doing a lot of shifts and changes to try to accommodate a lot of the situations that we're dealing with. So being informed is key, having conversations with HR, having conversations with your manager, let them know specifically what's going on for you and then have have um, sit down with them and then try to work up something that can help alleviate those particular fears around what you're concerned about so that you feel great about reentry back into the, the workforce if, if there's going to be a change in that situation. Also important to do is manage your boundaries so you can remember remain productive. Yeah, absolutely. You know, studies have shown that people have, the productivity levels have increased dramatically for a lot of people since they've been working remotely and not coming into the office. But studies have also shown there's been higher levels of stress and burnout because people aren't creating the boundaries between work and life. And so there's there's no demarcation between the two. And you would think after this time, you know, some people have kind of gotten the hang of it, but some people still have it and they're just kind of struggling with burnout. So if you're going to go back into the workforce or if you're going to create some type of or, or come into some type of hybrid situation, you want to still make sure that you're maintaining boundaries between work and life. You want to make sure that um, you are allowing yourself to be productive. Keep in mind that you may be a little bit more tired um, going into work, that you're not used to the disruptions of your coworkers and the, in the workspace, those impromptu meetings that actually now get scheduled because of Zoom, now your boss can just come by your office and say, hey, let's meet for a moment. Right. So you may your routine has is, is been thrown off quite a bit, and so it may impact your productivity. So what you want to do is if you haven't been able to build boundaries, then you want to really start establishing those boundaries so that you can continue to enjoy your family, right. to you know enjoy, you know maybe you, you took those walks in the middle of the day or things of that nature. So you, you want to be able to um, build the boundaries that are going to take place in the workforce as much as you have done at home. And if you haven't done those at home, if you're going to be working remote or hybrid or fully into the workplace, you want to make sure that there are boundaries around how you 
work when you work so you can avoid stress and burnout. And clearly, we've all got to take care of our mental health. It's been in the news uh, headlines quite a bit lately, but take care oh, of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, like we saw even with the Olympics, you know, I, I think that was so brave and so brilliant when, you know, we watched Simone Biles and, and other people just really have conversations around just the pressures that are on right. people and how we really have to focus in on our mental health. And and we can't underestimate the impact that this has had, right? So again, as I said, we can't think like, oh, it's back to business as usual or let's resume what we've done before. We really have to take into consideration our mental and emotional health. Right. And so if you've been able to do things like, you know, take long lunches or walk the dog or get some vitamin C or work in your backyard or other or, or work, have that morning workout or that afternoon workout just for your own mental sanity. You want to really think about how not to give that up, yeah. but to find ways to keep that incorporated. Right now, more than ever, even though the workplace is reopening, more 70 percent of employees are looking at whether or not they should build hybrid work situations right. or let people stay remote or come in. And so you want to make sure that as they're thinking about what's the best thing to do for them, that you're always thinking about what's the best thing to do for you and your mental health. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're welcome.